at that time. Too. Sure it was. It. Mm -hmm. And I worked there, I don't know if it's three or four years I worked there. I think it's about three, three years. Well, it was great to me because otherwise I'd have gone to UT and been a civil engineer and it wouldn't amount to anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, Probably. I mean, it, they were good to me. Yeah, well, you good. Know, they really were. Uh -huh. well, that's great. You had something to do with the mill? What mill was it? Or manufacturing? What? Leavening wool mills. I was there mm -hmm. 45 years. Mm -hmm. Leavening wool mills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was started out in the shipping department, and when I left, I was general manager. Uh -huh. And there's yeah. five of us that bought the Edgerton Innes in mm -hmm. early 60s. That's what she was talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, and I went there to get a job, and he helped me, and I didn't know it. I didn't <laughs> even know he he helped me. He recognized my name, you know. And I didn't ask him to do it, so I think that was something to think, say for him. What does the Lebanon wool mill do? Nothing. Now they're closed. Mm -hmm. And what did they do? Made blankets. Blankets. Big ones. We, uh, mm -hmm. we ran three shifts a day and were not short of orders for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. We were that, uh, we were recognized all over the country mm -hmm. as being the top in blanket manufacturing. Thank you. And did you take the raw wool mm -hmm. in or did you have it? We took the wool and went from there, washed it, spun it, wove it, on out, the whole thing. And I'll tell you an interesting thing in the, about consumers' report. I don't, have much, uh, I don't have much confidence in them. At one time, they took six of our blankets to check them. And we didn't know it. They picked them up on the, off the counters. And all, and one of them was from West Palm Pepperell, J.P. Stevens, the uh, Army Air Force, the uh, Faribault Woolen Mills, our own on their own label. And they ran a test on those blankets. And I was in charge of making those blankets. And, and uh, I know what they were. Every one of them was exactly the same when they, when they were woven. The only difference was when they were dyed and put in the packages. Each company wanted a package like they wanted them, but the material and the weaving and the and the picks in it were all the same. Well, they said two of them were excellent. Rest of them, mm -mm, no good. Well, they were identical. <laughs> and so since then, the Consumer Report for me is out. <laughs> I mean, well, now Charlie Howard, we, I called him for a long time, now his daddy is the one that let us have this house that, for my daddy to die in. Where, where, where was that? Which one was it? Where well, he died up above your house. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, at the wool mill, did you buy raw wool from the... Oh yeah, we bought... Uh, <coughs> Dr. Edgerton came over here from Carolina out of a textile area. And uh, he, after he got here, he started at Martha Gaston Hospital, and after he got here, he saw the, how many sheep were being grown here, and he had the idea of making the, putting up a plant to use the wool. But he was going to use it in men's, what is termed jeans cloth, and jeans cloth make men's breeches. And this wool here is too coarse for that. It took a finer wool and was being grown, so he switched from that over to blankets. And the first blanket that came out in 1908 is a lady was going to Texas. And she got that blanket and carried it with her to Texas. 1958, when it had the 50th anniversary, she sent that blanket back to us in good shape. The blanket is now is in the museum on West Main. Made in 1980, it's 90 years old. And uh, two or three days after Pearl Harbor. That time we were on Marine Corps blankets, armies, and also on Navy. I'm 100% on on government work. Next day or so after Pearl Harbor, about 2:30, Army trucks come in on that place down there, and soldiers went jumping out, want to know how to get on top of the building. They had the machine guns to set up on the building put us under strict guard because they thought we might get sabotaged because we were on government work. And he talked about scattering people. We didn't know what in the world was going on. We didn't know about it. <laughs> so they put us all under guard and we had to fingerprint everybody. And that fell my lot to do that. 
So we fingerprinted everybody. Of course, there was nobody in the whole group that was going to do anything, but they were that particular about it. Mm -hmm. And we also received the Army and Navy E for excellence in production. Mm -hmm. And that uh, was, we flew a flag that had the Army and Navy E on it. We flew that and had four. Every six months, they'd renew it mm -hmm. and give you four more commendations on it. What was the population of the town then? Of Lebanon? Six, really six seven thousand. That's a small town. That's a nice size. Well, it was, and we so. of course, they, uh, mm -hmm. since then, they've reached out and brought more people in. Mm -hmm. It makes it bigger, but. Mm -hmm. But now we, uh, that that was known to be one of the best places to work in, in Lebanon at, at the time. Well, at that time, mm -hmm. uh, we would, after the company made X amount of money, the balance of it was split up between the employees. Mm -hmm. Give us a big bonus. Bonus the end at Christmas time. Well, that's a rarity in that day. Well, oh, it was a rarity the biggest, the biggest bonus I ever got was 15 percent of what I made that year. Everybody got it. Yeah. I mean, not just me, mm -hmm. but everybody did. Yeah, everybody. And, and where did you go? When you were, where were you living at? Did you ever live in this area? I mean, here. Or? I was born about a quarter of a mile east of where the swimming pool is. Mm-hmm. Right yeah. down in those woods. And, uh, and I would see my and daddy, uh, his daddy let us have a house. Are you have one? Yeah. Oh, I talked to that. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. And that's above there. And, uh, yeah. and that's where I tell you his daddy gave us milk for my for my daddy. We didn't have our cow, we didn't have one. And this Sam buried his daddy, would give us milk for our daddy till he died. And the people don't do that much anymore, no. do they? No. We had a. Didn't charge us a bit of rent. We stayed in that house, and it was a good house. I mean, there wasn't anything really wrong with it. It was made in the older days, you know. We didn't have electricity. 1922, we built a new house in, across the road where the horse barn is down here. Mm -hmm. At that time, we had two tenants on the place, believe it or not, out here. House. If you can imagine. It was a pretty house. His grandmother lived with yeah, you, Yeah, her. yeah, yeah. His yeah. grandmother lived there. Mm -hmm. When the property is being bought up to uh, make the park, or make a park, uh, were you one of those families that didn't mind leaving, or...? Well, we didn't leave. Mm -hmm. We had, a, we sold right across the road from the swimming pool, was about 100 acres of woods that we owned. We sold that. We sold, a, I think we sold the highest price per acre of anybody in the park, and that's eighteen dollars. And my wife, Daddy, owned this place here, where, the, where we are now. And uh, we owned some land across the road from the horse barn, so that's where we were living and built down there. Wow! I went through the second grade at the <laughs> Friendship School, which was down to the left when you go down to the to the horse barn. Mm -hmm. Friendship used to. But now I never did see it. it tore down before. Yeah. I never did. But now Lee went to school there, you know. Yeah. Lee and Lauder. Lee liked the that rascal. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> he came up. Oh no, he uh, his daddy ran a store. That's our step. My step daddy. He's talking about now. He ran a store with Harrigan, and he's the only one of us that had the money. <laughs> and at recess, he would get out there, and he was a little older than me and two or three other boys, and. He'd have some quarters or something like that up his sleeve or in his hand, start scratching in the leaves and pick up that quarter. <laughs> well, we like to wore our hands out, scratching them leaves all over that, out there. He was always doing something like that. But this land here, mm -hmm. the amazing thing about it, we sur I went on a survey crew, and we went over to Portland and surveyed a bunch of land over there that if these people here wanted to move to. And the land over there was sorrier than this. Oh, that's hard to believe. Well, it oh, was. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't nothing but saw briars. Mm. Saw briars and ticks. <laughs> it being the thing. This, this don't even, you can't tell, you can't, where this land was out through here. It wasn't near as bad as it looks now. Well, I've been caving and hiking through the woods across the road over there, and some of those places are like moss and rock and moss and rock mm. and a hole in the ground. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, well I, found, I, oh found yeah. that, I thought, well, that'd be a tough way to make a living. Hold well, this, this area from right here on back out to the road over yonder was open. It was an mm -hmm. open field. Mm -hmm. 
just like it is over the fence there. Mm -hmm. Your family or your wife's family? Well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Wife's family lived here. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Oh, it was a scratch and go. And my dad, I never will forget one fall, he just told the tenant, says, we're not going to plow anymore on this old land. He said, I'm not going to try to raise enough corn to carry these teams through the winter to raise another crop next year. I'm going to sow it down and start milking cows, and that's what we did. Mm -hmm. That's why I and, he gave me a quart of milk every night for my dad. Hmm. I go down for this milk. He, he, my dad was one of the first people in Wilson County to use fertilizer on the corn. All the farmers said, well, you burn it up. And I thought they were right, but he, they weren't. Mm -mm. We, we plowed up. He said, we're not going to plow it either. At that mm -hmm. time, they plowed it four times, whether it needed or not. <laughs> and uh, we uh, put 300 pounds of 16% mm -hmm. phosphate in the row and we planted it. We plowed it one time, side dressed with nitrous soda, and then plowed it in more. And left out five or six rows to, to show the difference in it. And you can imagine what the difference was. Mm -hmm. Of course, now they've put 12, 1,400 pounds an acre. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was way ahead and some of the rest of them on his farm. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he decided one fall that we'd rent all the land we could around here. This before we started milking cattle. And sow it in Lespedeza. Lespedeza was a new crop coming in from Korea. And uh, we did. And we got half of the seed for two years. Well, the first year it didn't produce much, never did. But the second year it'd get acclimated and it would come on. And the second year, so it happened, it was a rainy season and it grew like everything. I, I rode a horse drawn mower 14 straight days, more and less than diesel. <laughs> and we, we thrashed that stuff mm -hmm. and had 42,000 pounds of less than diesel. And it sold seven cents a pound. <laughs> that was a oh, yeah, a fortune. It's a fortune those days, yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, when you were a kid growing up, you grew up down the road here? Yeah. And mm -hmm. played around in here? Yeah. Did you play around much in the cave? Oh, if we had, uh, on Sunday sometime, we had mm -hmm. somebody that never had been in it, we'd bring them over here and try to scare them half to death. Yeah. Going back in there and telling them, if you slip off in that <laughs> gully there, there's no bottom to it. And, of course, that was wrong. It's just a, it's just a gully all it was. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, we do. You know, if we got to hold somebody that never had been in it. How often do you see water flowing out of the cave? Not often. Not often. Mm -hmm. It uh, has to be a big rain to do it. And running around through the woods, I've noticed there's quite a few areas that aren't marked as caves, but certainly are large holes in the ground. Did you find that run across a few of those have any favorite haunts or? A no, no, we out? never did. We never did fool with that. I, mm -hmm. The strangest thing happened with the. Where Chicken Road crosses the highway down to Bears Mill, right in that, v in that fork there, there was a, what we would term as a lake today, it was a pond, we called it, I mean, maybe two acres. And that, in the 30s, people would dry, uh, drive the cattle over there to get water. I mean, it was so dry. Uh, and Mr. Simpson bought that area, and he decided he was going to make a dance hall around that pond. Well, at that time, people in the country do. Well, they didn't want this place even. A dance hall, no way. They want a dance hall in their community. So they raised so much cane that he said, well, I'll drain that dude. Well, there's no way you can drain a pond right out of a sinkhole like this. But he went to the east side. He's talking about these caverns. So I'm going to think about it. And he found a hole over there, and he dug a ditch to it. He drained that pond. But he went out into some of these caverns you're talking about. <laughs> And it never has held water since, but we caught an awful lot of good fish out of it when he drained yeah, it. I remember when that pond was out. Yeah. I remember going out there to a tent meeting. They had a big old tent down there. They were going to a tent meeting. Mm -hmm. This rock here came from a grist mill up on uh, Paul Creek. I did ask Mr. Gentry. Yeah, Gentry. Where's Fall Creek at? It's right between uh, Wilson and Rutherford County. Okay. And uh, uh, over there they had had this where this came from, and then had an off mill where you ground meal. Yeah. They carried your corn over there and ground meal. The, 
Was there water power at, at yeah. the mill also? It had a small dam across it and it water power. Yeah, that's what it was. And it had a steam engine on this block. I don't know what that purpose that served. Well, that's what... Uh, yeah, something like yeah, Shannon. Yeah. Shannon was saying that the yeah. steam engine set, that was set the base block. Yeah. Well, I, wasn't, I didn't know what the purpose it served, yeah, but they had two, two huge stones that rotated mm -hmm. and ground the meal. I know that. That was always an exciting trip to get to go over there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember going to uh, ride with Granddad down to the local mill mm -hmm. in Old Woody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unload several sacks and load several more back on. Mm -hmm. Well, this sure is pleasant out here. I... It's kind of hot, so the air conditioning. <laughs> It's nice though out here. I you mean, don't die when you, you know, I don't here. think of any place you ever live. If you live a place that you are like 15 years old, I don't think you ever have a real home. See this home, everybody. This is home to me. Mm -hmm. home. I don't see the squirrels. I guess they. They gone to town. <laughs> they I guess they're all in my backyard. They're in my they're front in I tell you what, these cicadas or cicadas or whatever locusts, whatever they are, mm -hmm. I mean, they've covered us up. They Ooh. covered the yard. Where are you living now, sir? I live at West End Heights in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And it's a cave about thick over there now? Oh, man. There's bushels of them. With the hulls around the, oh, around the trees. Oh, man. My house uh, in West Nashville is... Uh, we've got more than anybody else I've seen around. They're just now starting to poke their head out. There are a few in Murphy. I live in Murphy. There's not mm -hmm. very many there yet. But they will be, I'm sure. I remember when the cat... Well, that's the longest Katie did. Uh, and hear them in the woods, you hear them, and they say Pharaoh. That's what Mama used to say, they yeah. said Pharaoh. You hear them in the afternoon, they just holler. And, yeah, mm -hmm. awful. Mm -hmm. But now, they was, I think that was longer. This is just six weeks, I don't know. There's a longer, 13 or something, this is 13 years. 13 years, every so many years they come out. Whenever they want to, you know, I don't keep up with them. No, <laughs> I don't. I'm not I don't know how somebody else keeps up with them sometimes either. I don't either. know. I just know what I read. I don't either. I remember them though before. Mm -hmm. Vaguely. Mm -hmm. and this area here, you're talking about squirrels, used to be one of the prime squirrel hunting areas right here. Right here? Yeah. Was there nut trees around? Nut trees going? and they had dens. They had big old oaks that were mm -hmm. dens. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a, was a good prime place. The squirrel you have around here, is that the, the gray squirrel, eastern gray squirrel? Gray, yeah. Oh. Any of the black squirrels or the mm. red fox squirrels? Fox squirrels, yeah, you see them. Mm -hmm. But they're usually in a more open area. Yeah. On the hill, they like to be on hills with big yeah. trees that are scattered. I remember people used to eat squirrels. Yeah, we did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, sure we did. Winter that... time, rabbit, mm -hmm. coon. Coon. Uh -uh. No, yeah, you coon. didn't eat coon. Yeah. yeah, you did. In the wintertime. Oh, yeah. 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 The, uh, uh, Deer population seems to be stronger today than it has been. When I was growing up out here, there wasn't any deer. What no deer? I'd have given anything to get. I'd given anything to get to kill a deer, because I thought that venison evidently is the best meat there ever been. Mm -hmm. But I found out different when. Yeah, you got old meat too. <laughs> what do you think it is? It's no less hunting and more pasture. Or less no, no, they brought them in. Oh. And they were transplanted oh, into here, but I don't know how they they as many of them. As they are, because they're everywhere now. Oh yeah, uh, they're a nuisance, really. I was up on last weekend. I was uh, going to a camp out up on uh, just north of Cookville on the lake, and I two of them I had to chase them out of the road, getting into the campground, and, mm -hmm. and one girl hit one coming in. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, they're dangerous. Yeah. Really, they tear they're a car all to pieces. I've been run over by a deer, a <laughs> shopping basket, and a rock. And a rock. A rock. We were going over North Carolina, uh -huh. and the county were working on the road, the road over there, and a big rock fell off the back of that truck. How many and children do you have, Charles? Two. Two? So where are they now? Uh, my daughter lives here, and my son lives in Jacksonville, North Carolina. He was with the service? No, he's with, uh, he's with a church school. He runs a church school over there, and she teaches here. Have a great grandson. It's in San Antonio in the service. Hmm. Well, you say one of the, the fellow here came from the textile area in North Carolina to do the mill. Yeah. 
Doctor Dr. Edgerton. Doctor Ed Edgerton. E D G E R T O N. Yeah, that's, that's where I came from. I Burlington area. Yeah. Texas. Oh, he's from. I think he was from Kenley. Kenley, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know the place. Well, they did run that that woolen mill. It was a good place to work. Used to be. And it, you know, yeah, there's a, uh, we sold it. We bought it from Edgerton, five of us, uh -huh. and then one of our partners died. And then four of us sold it to ten people under us. Mm -hmm. And we arranged it for them to be able to pay it. Mm -hmm. And the interest rates got up to 20, 21 percent. And this company here was undercapitalized to begin with. And ordinarily, we'll start making blankets in January, February, and March that don't go out till May, June, July. So you had a, a big inventory until it started moving. So your cash flow would get you cramped. And that 20, 21 percent almost fixed it to where they couldn't carry on. Well, you and they sold it to another guy. And, and you didn't retire, it, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't retire from that. They they worked them there. You know, I worked with one little lady who was 80 years old, still yeah. working. Yeah. She worked. And Mr. Mr. Edgerton, had, they had... Uh, a devotional every morning, a 15-minute devotional after you clocked in. And if you were late getting there, you had to sing a song. <laughs> well, it caused me to have a wreck one morning. I was out here. I was living out here, <laughs> driving in. I was going to be late, and I was running too fast. <laughs> I wasn't fixing to sing, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me about the park here. Uh -huh. mm. Well, a lot of fun. We, I did. I was on a survey crew and uh, <laughs> enjoyed an awful lot. We set the roads. I was on that crew. I wasn't on a land acreage survey. And those roads are set in here by the by federal specifications, believe it or not. There's the crisscross straight and there are roads across there? Yeah. And the, the main road coming in here, on down yonder, the, the curve are banked, just exactly what it's supposed to be. Biggest waste of money ever been, <laughs> and uh, then in the old swimming pool down here, I handled the transit and, and set it in, set the pool in down there, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed. But we, believe it or not, there's a geodetic survey point up on Pine Needle Knob, right out of uh, Shaw Springs up here. There's another one down way on over on the river this way. We went to Old Jefferson, which is 15 miles, 20 miles south of here, from almost Smyrna. And we started running a level now, and a level is a slow type of surveying. <laughs> Hanging that point, tying that point down there in, coming through the park, tying it in with the one on Pine and Spanish Needle Knob. And at that time, we came up this road down here, Richmond Shop Road. And as we went by my house, I was handling the level instrument, and I shot our elevation of our front porch, 627 feet above sea level. <laughs> and I was looking at the topographical map in there, the other day I had one of them, and just noticing the, the different elevations. Now why in the world do we spend all that time <laughs> tying that in? I don't know. Silly. <laughs> well, did you wave at your mama when you came back? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, me. Uh -huh. yeah, we but this, uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know who started this idea of having this park out here, really, um, unless it's uh, Mr. Perry. No, I believe he, he started, the, I don't believe, he was in legislation, but I believe he was in there when he started the Appalachian or Gatlinburg Park, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know who started this one. And the play, the music was Mr. Robinson. He had a band there for many years. You remember? He oh, worked yeah. at the Woolen Mill yeah. too. And I guess before, after that, though, happened. He played, had a good band. Is there a house foundation or any of it still there? Uh, the old place has a well. I've, I found it about three years ago. The other place has a, a trailer sitting down there now. It's right across the road from the horse barn down okay. here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they let it let the house deteriorate, and then finally tore it down. Mm -hmm. We had a now this is 1920. It didn't have electricity out here, and uh, 21 or somewhere along then. 
And when we built that house, I don't know where my dad learned or found out about it, but we put in a coal acetylene light plant. Oh. And it's a coal plant like that is run off of gas created by carbide. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a big, uh, about a 500 gallon tank buried in the ground with water in the bottom, 200 pound of carbide in the top. And every, whenever it needed the gas, it dropped some carbide and the gas came in through the pipe into the house. And those lights were as good as the as the uh, electric lights are today. Mm -hmm. So we were uptown, I mean, nobody else had it. Well, you used the white, uh, what was that, the white to make uh, paint fences? Oh, yeah. yeah. The refuse from that tank, every, you had to clean it out every year or so, and the refuse from that made good whitewash. Mm -hmm. So you used that for whitewashing your fence or your chicken, mm -hmm. chicken houses, and I mm -hmm. didn't like that much. Yes, I that's yeah. kind of poisonous stuff, that leftover spent carbide on the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty pretty good stuff. And How often did you have to refill? For about pounds? once a year. What, 200 pounds to get you through a year? Yeah, about a year, yeah. And would you yeah. physically go out there and drop the carbide in? Or no, what? no, it was automatic. Mm -hmm. it, 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 whenever the pressure, gas pressure dropped enough, way to drop some more carbide in. And, Impressive. Uh, Thing about it was, we would go after he put that in. Of course, that company wanted him to try to sell more of them, and we'd go with a demonstrator to a house, and and they had a small uh, plant, and uh, you turn the lamps out, light that up. After a while, you turn that out and put the lamps back on. Of course, you couldn't see the lamps hardly. I mean, it's awful good demonstration. Did you sell any? Yeah, a few. I don't know what they cost, they're not too extreme. Wow. Well, uh, any other stories of, of uh, mischief or... Uh... <laughs> no, mischief? Man. I can't think of any. I can't think of any. Did your mom let you swim down here in the pool or were you, you one of those bound for hell? Oh, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't care about that pool. <laughs> <clears throat> My dad was a comedian. Yeah, he really he was. He good, too. And uh, he, he could... what. After, we, after I started school out at Major, if it rained, he'd come after us in a buggy. And that was embarrassing because we didn't have a car. <laughs> and he'd come early. Yeah. And there was a three-teacher school. And the darn principal would let would call the other two rooms in, the auditorium. And he'd put on a show, singing and buckwing dancing and all that kind of stuff. And it embarrassed me to death. I tell you what. <laughs> I could have crawled under the dead gum house. But, uh, and down here at the swimming pool now, mm -hmm. he can stay under water longer than anybody I've ever seen. I've been fishing with him, and, and fishing what they call grabbing and catching with your hands under rocks. Mm -hmm. And he can stay down longer than anybody. <laughs> so, just after this opened, he was over here one day, and in the summertime he wore overalls, one gallus, and the sides undone. And he was stumbling around down there and fell off in the deep end and just sat down on the bottom. Well, of course, that wasn't a thing to do, but the little old lifeguard, he didn't want to do. He went in after him, and he couldn't get him up. Yeah. <laughs> and after a while, of course, he shot up. But uh, I've thought about it a lot of time, but that wasn't a thing to do, of course. <laughs> he had a lot of fun out of it anyway. How long could he stay up? I don't know. He must have. It looked like three or four minutes, but I don't know how long he could stay. Really. And he learned that from, from grappling fish? Yeah. Yes, and he was a strong person, too. I mean, yeah, he, was, he, was, he was, was a strong was, person. He was unusual, though. He wasn't a run of the mill. Uh, we'd go hunting, squirrel hunting, and hunt with the dog and rocks. We didn't carry a gun. Dog and rocks? Dog and rocks. And if a squirrel stayed up a tree, he got knocked out. And if he jumped out, the dog would catch him. We were coming down through the, from a bin hunt one day, and there was an old tree, about four me them out yonder, that, an old snag, and it had a couple of holes, and one up in, one down there. And he said, you know, the other day I came along here and had a couple of rocks, and I threw one in that top hole. And he cut loose and threw another in it then, tell me about it. <laughs> and he said, I threw one in the bottom hole, and he did that. I swear that's true. <laughs> I mean, he was that good. 
And I thought everybody should be able to do it. I couldn't, but I thought they're supposed to. Yeah, he's, uh, he was just doing it. And he, was, he learned to throw, curve a baseball. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, from Christy Matheson, mm -hmm. he said. Okay. And yeah. one day, he was in town on Saturday, and a bunch of those guys out there would come out here hunting, and they knew how he could throw rocks and ball, too, and he told uh, Les Carson, said, Sam, let's go up here, and I want you to pitch some batting practice to these boys up at Cumberland. They never seen a curve ball. He went up there, and here's that old man with the overalls on, about to fall off. <laughs> he threw a left-handed boy came up, and he threw a straight ball, and he struck at it. He threw a curve at him, and next time he struck at it, and hit him in the stomach. Curved right in on him. Well, he threw another straight one or two, and then threw him another curve, and he struck it, and it hit him. He threw his bat down and says, the heck with that old guy. <laughs> 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 oh. Did you learn fish grabbing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you used to do that? Oh, yeah. We went over, they drained the mill pond over at Walter Hill, the side of Mosborough. We went up to headwaters of that, and we caught a world of fish. I he, think people were crazy to do that. Well, yeah. if you catch a snake, he won't bite you underwater. You can turn him loose before he gets out. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I got to go now. Okay. Very nice see catch. you later. Oh, nice see you. Yeah, good to uh -huh. see you. I'll see you later, All right. <laughs> but uh, we were over there this day, and there was a big rock stuck up out of the water, and he went down and found a hole under it. And he felt a fish under there. He came up and got another breath of air and went down. And I thought he never would come up. And finally he came up and he had a six pound catfish with his fingers and his gill like this. And when he came up, that old fish was flopping. He was too, but. Uh. That, that just seems like the. Uh, I've done some nutty things, but I won't do that. At least I, I had the right teacher. I don't think I would now, no. No. No, I don't think I would either. He was a remarkable person, and so, he was good. I'll never forget him as long as I live. When did he pass? I don't know, let's say that. 51, 50, he was, uh, mm, he's 70, he was 70, mm. 71 years old. Mm. But uh, he, uh, you know, he had a feeling for people. Oh, he was, he, he was a good, was and I, I went to school at Harrison, and I went with his sister, Lillian, and I told her we didn't have a house. And so she went home and told his daddy, and he came back over and told us to move in his house up here and didn't charge us a cent or anything after my daddy died. Did he die happy? Mm -hmm. My daddy? Yeah. He died without any, without a lot of pain. Yeah. Uh, I, he had, he had, I know now that he had ulcers, stomach ulcers, because he couldn't eat any hog meat at all. And then we'd kill hogs in the fall, we'd swap the lard in for uh, cocoa or vegetable shortening. What they call it. And we'd, we'd buy a, a keg of salt fish in the fall to use instead of, instead of so much pork. And he said the one thing that Jew, Jewish people are smart in, not eating that hog meat. And uh, I know now that's what's wrong with him. Now they could probably help him with it, but he couldn't at that time. But it's nice seeing you, Charles. Oh, yeah, good to see you. And I'll uh, uh, see you later. I got to be moving on. Okay. Mm -hmm.